Inflation is back in America, which is another way of saying we might be heading back to the 1970s. The 1970s were notoriously the era of inflation, an inflationary spiral that was out of control and that threatened to shipwreck the American economy until one Ronald Reagan came along and put a stop to all that. Now, we've seen from other countries how destructive inflation can be. I don't even know the inflation rate in Venezuela. Uh, it is millions. it is literally, it started out at thousands of percentage points and now it's millions of percentage points. Essentially, it renders the currency totally useless. Uh, we have an inflation rate now of 5%, but it's gone from like zero to five in no time. This is almost like uh, an unwelcome visitor who's been hiding behind your door and he jumps out and goes, I'm here. And uh, we haven't had this problem in America now for almost, well, for three decades, really since Reagan. Uh, and so we're not used to it. And for some people on the left, it's like, no big deal. What's what's the big deal? Inflation, you know, I'm, um, they've never lived under it. They don't know what ex inflation even is. So I want to talk about inflation and its very basic meaning from the ground up. First of all, what is it? The word itself doesn't really tell you that much. Inflation, which just means kind of blowing up. You you inflate a balloon. You know, our, uh, there was the inflationary expansion of the early universe. What does this have to do with the, the economy? What do we mean by the word inflation? Well, I would explain it this way. Try to imagine, for example, um, a, uh, a small society of 100 people uh, with a certain price level. And the price level is, let's say, $10. Everything in society costs $10. And it's been that way, which means, means that the uh, inflation rate is zero and the price level is stable. Uh, or it could be that the economy is growing at a, at a slow pace, let's say 3% a year, and uh, prices have been rising at exactly that pace, which is to say they have kept pace with the overall growth of the economy. Now what happens is that the government of this society decides, for example, to double the amount of money in circulation. They print money. Uh, and now suddenly where there, were, there was now, where there was X dollars, there are now 2X double the amount of money, but the same amount of goods. No one's made anything new. The economy is proceeding at exactly the same clip, but it's got this new infusion of cash. And what would happen? Well, suddenly you'd find that prices begin to dramatically increase. Why? Because of the law of supply and demand. By and large, you've got more money chasing the same amount of goods. And so as a result, there's a bidding up of the prices of those goods. That's essentially how inflation occurs. And how is it occurring in America today? Well, basically it's because the Biden administration is printing money. Now they don't do it in this crude way. They don't just say, well, listen, let's just print a bunch of money and stick it into circulation. But rather what happens is the government spends money and they spend money they don't have. And they spend money, but they don't want to increase the national debt. So in various ingenious ways, using bonds and treasury bills and so on, they in effect print money. And the effect of printing money is to put more dollars into the country. It's the same amount of goods. And so it pushes up the prices of things. And we're seeing prices jumping up here, jumping up. Prices seem to be jumping up everywhere. And remember that when prices of one thing go up, say fuel, that affects the truckers. That affects the goods that go to the grocery store. That affects the price of lumber because lumber is transported. And so there's a kind of effect in which inflation starts pushing from one product to another throughout the economy. Now, we haven't had inflation in America for three decades in part uh, because we've had relatively stable monetary policies and also because of technology. One of the good things about technology is it has a deflationary, an anti-inflationary effect. Why is that? Well, think about your TV. The same TV that cost $1,500 uh, five years ago now costs $500. That means that you're actually getting more TV for the same price, or you're getting the same TV at a much lower price. So that is the opposite of prices going up because in effect, what's happening with technology is prices are going down. And yet, despite this deflationary effect of technology, we have so much inflation in America today that it, the net inflation rate is still pushing up now to 5% and it can go much higher. And if Biden spending programs are put into effect, it will go much higher. 
Reagan realized that he had a serious problem on his hand. It, inflation was out of control. Inflation was actually double digits. It had begun in the late 60s, but in the 1970s, you saw rates of 10, 11, 12, even 15 percent inflation. And what would happen is you'd go to the grocery store, you'd go to the mall and you'd find that the same piece of merchandise often had multiple stickers. Why? Because it would sit there for two months and the price would go up. So then you'd have to put a new price tag on. And really poor people I would see in the grocery store in the late 70s when I first came to America, they would be going to the back uh, to pick up an old tin because the old can had the old price and therefore they would they'd be able to get something a little cheaper than it was before the price went up. Um, there was a remedy for inflation, but it's a very painful one. It's the same remedy you have if your car is out of control and going really fast. You have to slam on the brakes. And that's exactly what Reagan did. He supported through Paul Volcker. Paul Volcker was the, the um, head of the Federal Reserve, a, a kind of clamping down on the monetary supply, which squeezed the economy and in fact flung it into a recession, the recession of 1982. Um, it caused a lot of strains on people. It was very difficult for the economy. Reagan's unpopularity actually went up. Reagan's, uh, Reagan's uh, approval rating plummeted. Uh, and it was only when the economy slowly began to recover that Reagan's uh, popularity was restored. So the bottom line, the Biden administration is engaging in very irresponsible policies that are driving prices up across the board. Uh, inflation is a hidden tax, if you think about it. Why? Because what it does is it erodes the value of your money without even imposing a tax increase. If there's 10% inflation, that means if you had $100, now you have $90. I mean, you still have 100 in your wallet, but it only buys what $90 would buy before. That's the So it's cost, it's like a 10% tax on you, but they never tell you. They never enact the tax. They don't have to in, uh, face the political risk, or we're going to impose taxes on the middle class. And inflation is also, it hurts the middle class and the poor more. Why? Because think about it. Who spends a greater proportion of their income on basic necessities? And so when basic necessities go up in price, it hurts people who can least afford them the most. Uh, inflation is also a certain form of theft. It's a form of theft because it's essentially taking resources away from you and me, from the private sector, and transferring them over to the government. Why? Because the government is the one that gets to do the spending, but you and I end up paying the price, even though they never tell us that we're doing it. Kind of amusingly, toward the end of uh, the Reagan era, when Reagan's policies had all worked and the economy was now going really great, um, somebody asked him, they said, you know, how do you know that your economic policies are working? And Reagan goes, well, the best sign that my economic policies are working is they don't call it Reaganomics anymore. 